What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to It's Poppin'. So, in this video, as the title suggests, I am going to go over everything you need to know for your pop-up camper's electrical systems. So essentially, your pop-up camper power basics. So what I'm gonna go over are all of the basic components within your pop-up camper, um, how everything essentially works, how it all interconnects and works kit together, as well as some basic troubleshooting tips in case you are having, you know, some trouble with your lights or your outlets, things of that nature. So if that pertains to you, or you just wanna know a little bit more about your pop-up campers, electrical system, stick around. So first things first, how do you get power to your pop-up camper? Now there's two basic methods or means of getting power to your pop-up camper. The first and possibly more common, if I had to guess, or at least the more common method we use is shore power. So when you plug into the electrical post or even at home, you're plugging into shore power and that's that 110 or commonly referred to 110 or 120 volt shore power. Now the second method is via use of a deep cycle battery. And that's gonna be a 12 volt deep cycle battery because um, the majority of your pop-up campers electrical components operate off that 12 volt as we'll dive into in just a second. So if you're running off of shore power, you naturally have to take your pop-up campers electrical cord. And in this example, well, as you can see right here, we have a 30 amp plug. Now you can take this 30 amp plug right here and plug it directly into a 30 amp receptacle. Now on the other hand, if you're at home or maybe at your storage facility or whatnot, and you wanna plug in maybe to test some components out, well then more than likely, unless you have a 30 amp outlet already installed at wherever you're at, you're probably gonna have available a 15 or 20 amp outlet available to you which is perfectly fine, but the general rule of thumb, and I won't say in all scenarios, but the general rule of thumb, if you're um, just plugging into your home outlet, is to not run your air conditioner, but every other component within your electrical system is just fine to test out or run. So for example, we have our 30 amp cord. Actually, this is an extension cord, but for, <laughs> For the video, we'll pretend this is our 30 amp cord coming out of the pop-up camper. Just pretend with me for a second. So we have our 30 amp cord, and then right here we have your basic 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. As you're gonna tell, this little guy will plug into any standard household outlet. But it is important to know that it's only rated to 15 amps. So like I said before, be careful with your air conditioner. But that simply plugs right into here and then you can plug right on in to your wall outlet. So that's gonna be your shore power, commonly called 110 or 120 volt. That'll operate literally everything within your pop-up camper. Like I said, as long as you have enough amperage coming into your pop-up. And for, I would say most pop-ups made today, they're 30 amp. Now don't be alarmed if you have even a smaller voltage, um, or I, I should say amperage cord. You know, if you don't have a rooftop air conditioner, there's really no need to have such a big um, electrical cord. So just take this as one example of our particular pop-up, but you might have a smaller cord that you can plug right into your wall outlet, no problem. Now, on the other hand, you have 12 volt battery. So fortunately, we have a couple pop-ups to um, show. One of them we have popped up. The other one right here is our 2007 Fleetwood which you can see the battery a lot better on with the bunkhead not being slid out. So here is your basic 12 volt battery. And like all batteries, it has a positive and a negative side where commonly on the positive side, actually I should say always on the positive side, you're gonna see some sort of fuse. Now on this particular pop-up, it came or at least came to us with 
one of these self resetting, I'm going to assume, oh, you know what? That's actually a 30 amp, a self resetting, oh, sorry, 15 amp. That's a self resetting 15 amp fuse on it. But commonly, you'll just see the blade fuses in line on that positive side. Black positive, or if you see the fuse, that's also indicative of it being uh, for the positive side. And then, of course, on the other side, we have the negative. And that's going to just be grounded out on the chassis. Um, I would say probably somewhere down in here. But uh, that's usually, or I should say always, grounded out. This positive, on the other hand, runs all the way back into the converter. So here is our pop-up camper's converter. Not to be confused with an inverter. What a converter does is it converts 110 or 120 volt down to 12 volt. Um, but it does a little bit more in addition to that. It will also take that um, 120 or 110 volt and once it converts it down to 12 volt, you'll see you also it also houses a series of fuses within here. So we have fuses to protect our 12 volt part of the house, if you will, but we also have these circuit breakers. So not only does it bring in 120 and convert it down to 12, well, it also provides the fuses and the converters to protect your, um, electrical components but it will also pull that 12 volt power from your battery essentially relay it through the converter that way they're all protected by those fuses and then distribute it further on to you know your various 12 volt electrical components and we do have a video on on-grid versus off-grid electrical so that really kind of takes a deep dive into what components of your pop-up you can use when you're on shore power and what components you can use when you're boondocking or when you're off grid and just have a battery but in essence anything that plugs into your standard wall outlet won't work unless you're plugged into shore power so to further explain the converter actually wfco sent us this brand new converter and it's actually an auto detect now if you're wondering the model it is a wfco model WF8735 slash AD. Now what the AD stands for is auto detect, which we'll jump into a little bit later. But in essence, the converter, as you can see, super similar to um, our old Elixir model, but the WFCO also has, you know, the spots for your fuses on the 12 volt side of the house. And it also has spots which these break away for your um, circuit breakers on the 120 side of the house. But if we flip this around, it kind of shows, I don't know, maybe a little bit more of the inner workings of the converter. Now, what we don't see here is any 30 amp going in, and this is where your big 30 amp cord would go in. And then these are where your 120 volt would go out. And so what we're gonna actually do is quickly exchange, or hopefully quickly exchange, our um, old elixir model for this new wfco but moving on all these color-coded wires right here are essentially the 12 volt output for the converter so as you can see we have well hold on let me take out the green i think that's ground actually it says right here which is super nice okay so brown gray blue yellow and green are the positive for DC and or 12 volt appliances. Whereas the red is going to the battery positive and the white is the negative. So essentially we have four different circuits, if you will, for 12 volt power that we can tie into. Now I believe we're only gonna be using three in our pop-up, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. So just like I said on the WFCO, you can kind of see, well, here's our big 30 amp coming in. Here's our one, two, three, um, 120s coming out. I assume probably one for the microwave, one for the air conditioner, and maybe one for our outlets, but that's just my guess. And then on the 12 volt side of things, we have one, two, three, uh, yeah, one, two, three, uh, 12 volt DCs coming out, and then our positive to the battery and our negative, and then finally, we have our ground. So as you can tell, the converter really is, I don't know, the lifeblood of your pop-up camper's power. It's, well, 
literally the power center. So once again, you have 120 coming into it, you have 12 volt coming into it, and then it appropriately selects, um, you know, where to send that 12 volt, where to send that 120 volt, et cetera, et cetera. But not only does it do that for all the components with your system, but it will also charge your 12 volt battery. And that's kind of the cool thing about that WFCO um, auto detect. It will auto detect whether you have a lead acid battery or a lithium battery and appropriately charge each of those. Because as many of you may know, lead acid's a lot different than lithium in terms of its chemistry, in terms of um, the appropriate way to charge it. So that's where that's kind of nice. But I guess if you guys are getting into lithium batteries, you probably already know that. So that's kind of cool thing about that. All right guys, so with all that being said, let's jump into actually replacing this old Elixir. I think it's the EXL30 with this new um, WFCO. They're both 30 amp units. And that's the important thing to note when, when and if you may have to switch out your converter, if your old converter dies or if you need to put in a new one, that you just match the appropriate amperage with the new one. Um, it's also nice if the new one fits the same form factor of the old one or is slightly bigger. And that's exactly the case here. The new WFCO is slightly bigger than or at least in like height and width in terms of the hole that needs to be cut out in the back of our wall. So we can accommodate that by making the hole a little bit bigger. So let's jump into it. Safety first. So now that we've got the old converter, I gotta watch out for my light wires here. Now that we've got the old converter all disconnected and we've got the new hole or slightly bigger hole cut out for the new converter, I can kind of show you and explain, I don't know, kind of the inner workings of the converter or what's going on behind the scenes rather. Here is our big 30 amp cord and that's what brings in the 110, 120 power. As you can see, positive, neutral, ground, etc. Over here, we have a 15 amp. This is just like, I think it's called Romex wire. Electricians, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, just a Romex wire right here. And this probably either powers the outlets and or the microwave. Um, next up, we have the these two Romex cables, and one's a little bit thicker gauge, but we have the yellow and the white. And I'm gonna assume because the yellow is a thicker gauge, it's gonna be for the air conditioner. And then next to it, once again, is either going to be for the microwave or the outlets. So that's the 120 side of the house. And then it kind of fell back in here, but I taped it all together here we have our 12 volt side of the house and then the ground for the whole thing. So the ground is just the copper wire sticking out right here. Um, we have our three 12 volt lines going out or should, I, I should say it's technically one, two, three, four, five, six, but these three went into one 12 volt line, specifically the blue. The brown went into the brown, and then these two yellows went into the yellow. So I don't know exactly what each of these is powering, but it's some component within the 12-volt system. And finally, we have the red wire, which goes to the battery positive, which brings juice into the converter from the battery, and also, well, that charges the battery when we're plugged into shore power. So you can kind of see the behind-the-scenes workings of the converter and all the various wires that go to it but essentially we have our 120 side and then our power coming in 12 volt side and once again power coming in from the battery and finally our ground so pretty simple once you break it all down
Alright guys, so in theory the new converter is all wired in hopefully correctly. Funnily enough, I had to go back and look at my GoPro uh, footage and, and check out what some of the um, positive wires went in the old converter. So thankfully, <laughs> I videoed it and had some okay photos and was able to figure that out because uh, it, well, this is only the second time I've replaced a converter and uh, it's been a while since the first time. So once again, fingers crossed. Um, I think first things first, I will check out our 12 volt systems. Up until this point, I've just been running on some uh, little little area lights there plugged into the garage. So let's check out our 12 volt and then we'll plug in the pop-up and see if our 120 volt is up and running. Well, as you guys can see, uh, we have lights at a minimum, which is great. Uh, see, battery voltage is registering. Do we got some floor lights? Sure do. Seems like for all intents and purposes, without like diving way into the 12 volt systems, we're up and running so far. So let's get uh, short power, short power that is plugged in and make sure all of our outlets are up and running. Outside outlets. Do you work? Oh, duh. Let's go flip on our circuit breakers. All right, one at a time here. There's our main 30 amp, our 215s, well there goes our microwave, and our 20. All right, back on outside, question mark, oh, beautiful. All right, so clearly the microwave turned on as you heard it beep. We'll just test all of our outlets, and as long as we have power on, one, I'm gonna assume we have power on all of these. Yes, that's correct. So the only one that leaves kind of in question is our 20 amp, which is tucked way over here. And there you have it. So you guys may have noticed these blue things taped to the wall. And what I actually do is take spare fuses and tape them on the backside of the cover here. So I've got three 15 amp fuses and then a 30 amp fuse as well. And finally, we added a 40 to the mix so I will grab a little bit more painter's tape and just throw a quick 40 amp fuse right there. That way, if any of these ever were to blow, we have a quick spare really handy. Now that we're done with the converter install, we are officially out of daylight. So we will come back tomorrow and talk about some common troubleshooting techniques that uh, you can go through if you're having problems with a particular component within your pop-up camper. Hey guys, welcome to a new day. So let's jump into troubleshooting. So first things first, let's talk shore power. Now, a common indicator that you may be having problems with your shore power are none of your outlets work or your air conditioner works or something essentially that plugs into your standard wall outlet. So if you guys are just testing stuff out at home, you're more than likely gonna be plugged into some sort of standard wall outlet. Now uh, let me flip you around right here. As you can see, we have a nice 20 amp outlet that also happens to be a GFCI. So starting right here, what we can do is we can use just a simple GFCI tester to see A, we have power and B, well, that the GFCI isn't tripped. So that's, you know, something to always check if you're at home. Are you getting power to that outlet, right? And going further and beyond that, like, could something have tripped a circuit breaker in your house? That's always possible. Now, on the other hand, if you are plugged into an electrical pedestal at the campground or whatnot, and maybe you have your 30 amp plugged in, well, once again, there could be an issue there. 
Those pedestals will also have their own circuit breakers. So make sure those are flipped on. Every once in a while, we'll, we will arrive at a campsite and see that 30 amps are flipped off. So you gotta flip them off on, of course, to get some power. Um, additionally, what we like to use is a surge protector and that will light up um, and also tell us very similarly to um, this guy right here if the pedestal is appropriately wired and if it's getting the appropriate uh, voltage. So that's something that can help you um, with knowing that you have power coming out of your pedestal. So we just have a simple multimeter hooked up to our battery and as you may be able to see we're reading at a 12 0.86, a healthy 12.86 volts. So because we're reading at 12.86 volts, that means the battery is nice and healthy. Really with anything, especially with a lead acid battery like this, anything below, I believe off the top of my head, 12.2 volts is gonna be under 50%, which in essence is gonna be, you know, working capacity wise, it's essentially dead. So you want that to be above 12.2. And technically it's best to take the reading when it's not being charged and when there's not a load. So after it's been resting for a little bit. But nevertheless, make sure your battery has the appropriate charge. And if you have one, make sure your battery disconnect switch is turned on. That way, you know you have 12 volt power if you're boondocking or if you're not hooked on to uh, you know, a power pedestal. And while I'm right here, I might remind you guys once again that there's probably some sort of fuse, whether it's a blade fuse or a self-resetting fuse, coming off the positive line on your battery. Once again, a good thing to check if you're having issues with your battery. Furthermore, as you can see right here, the battery is grounded out to the frame. So. Make sure if you're having battery issues that your wires and your um, negative, if you will, are properly grounded out. All right guys, so we're moving back inside. Once again, we're back at the converter. Really is the, I don't know, the main factor in your pop-up camper's power. But flipping back over to the 120 volt side of the house, remember, once again, there are these breakers these circuit breakers for the 120 side of the house. So you have your main, you have a 15 amp, which like I said, uh, right here is for the microwave, 15 amp for the outlets, and then a 20 amp for the air conditioner. On the uh, 12 volt side of the house, however, we have fuses. So, and actually the cool thing about this WFCO is I believe there are little LEDs to the right of the fuses which will light up if they are if they fail or if they break which is really nice really nice uh, visual indicator that a fuse is blowing so once again 120 you have your breakers on your 12 volt you have your fuses so definitely a good thing to check now on some things and for example this is our cassette toilet compartment on some things, there are hidden fuses. So it really pays to know each component of your pop-up. And as you can see right back in there, if I get my hand out of there, there is a three amp fuse right there. So there are those things out there that do run on power. And in this case, 12 volt power that might have their own fuses. So if it's an individual component like that, Maybe poke around a little bit, do some Googling. They might have their own fuse hidden somewhere. All right guys, so if it's not a circuit breaker or a fuse or the power source that's an issue, there is another component that is commonly seen in pop-up campers and that is a disconnect switch. So this is where our disconnect switch is located on our JCO. And what happens is when the roof closes, this gets popped up, which, in turn cuts power to our rooftop lighting and also in our case our fan that's just the way i have it wired up but you're going to find these disconnect switches in all sorts of places within your pop-up campers so on our actually right here on our 2007 uh, fleetwood for example there is a disconnect switch on the wall and when the bunk is all the way on the back side i should say is all the way slid back, 
it presses against uh, the disconnect switch, which then allows the overhead lights to come on. On our previous StarCraft, it was when you flipped up the stove that rested on the disconnect. Palomino, same thing, I think it was on the sink. So if you can't find your disconnect switch and you can't Google your way to finding it, look for parts that move or articulate when you're setting up your pop-up. It's probably something that you know gets pushed down or pressed against when you set it up. So if your overhead lights aren't working but everything else is seemingly working, check that disconnect switch. Another common issue I see is, for example, let's say you try and plug something in to your exterior outlets. Now, as you can see, this isn't a GFCI, GFCI outlet itself. However, it is connected in line with a GFC outlet inside. So, if any outlet for that matter, let's say it's that one, doesn't work, it may be because your GFCI outlet um, up wind of it is tripped. So you can just simply reset it and hopefully that fixes the rest of your outlets. So with all that being said, if your power source isn't the issue, if the a circuit breaker or a fuse isn't the issue, and if the converter isn't the issue, oh, and of course the disconnect switch isn't the issue, what could it be? Well, it really could boil down to possibly a bad wire connection. Maybe something got disconnected somewhere along the lines. And that's really just a matter of tracing it back and making sure everything's nice and tight and connected properly. You know, that's really hard to troubleshoot and, and it's probably why I left that for last. And if it's not any of that and, and or you've determined that possibly um, other components within either the 12 volt or the 120 volt side of things are working, like for example, let's say all of your 12 volt systems are working except your furnace blower isn't kicking on, well then it's probably some sort of issue with your furnace, right? On the flip side, if it's a 120 volt side of things and it's just one outlet, for example, that's not um, working, well, probably that specific outlet. So that's essentially the steps that I take to troubleshoot things. Um, just go right down the, the list from easiest to check to hard, hardest to check, right? And then try and just uh, go by the process of elimination. All right, guys, so there you have it. My memory card is telling me I only have four minutes left, so that means I talked way too much. So hopefully this isn't too long of a video. But I also hope and, you know, I, I wanted to empower you guys to be able to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on with your electrical system if you're having problems. But also, like I said before, just hopefully you wanna just learn a little bit more about your pop-up camper. So that way, if an issue does arise, you feel comfortable troubleshooting it and fixing it yourself. So with all that being said, guys, hopefully we see you in the next video. If not, hopefully we see you out there camping.